Hey everyone, what is going on? Welcome back to another video here on the channel. In today's video, we're doing another lithium polymer battery pack test. Now I got one here for you, and there's a couple firsts for the channel in this video. Now the first thing to talk about is, this is the first time that I'm gonna be testing a hard case lithium polymer battery pack that is ultimately designed for radio control cars. Now the reason why this is kind of unique is that it does take an extra precaution for me. What I have to do is crack that case open, expose the cells so that I'm able to accurately measure the temperature as we're going through our second test. And this is because I wanna make certain that the battery, as we're putting it under, under a significant load, that we do not actually exceed any maximums in terms of temperature thresholds. Now I wanna introduce the battery pack here to introduce the other element that is brand new to the channel as well. So here I have right from Firework, radio controlled RC car battery packs. Now this is ultimately the first time that I've had radio controlled battery packs being sent to me. So thank you a lot to the Firework team for getting these batteries to me to see how well they perform. Now being a first on the channel, they are well aware of how we actually test batteries on this channel. So we're gonna be testing these guys up against the Turnigy, rapid batteries that we ended up testing a while ago. Now the specs on these are 53 milliamp hour, 120 C. They are 4S battery packs. We're gonna be testing both of them and averaging, combining their results here, just like we do for the rest of the data sheet. If you wanna download a copy of the entire database that we have so far, you can do so on the RC Explained Patreon site. If you're a member of the tier two community there, you can download that specific sheet. With that being said, let's get started and introduce here our very first test that we're gonna do. So I'll throw that on the screen here and we're gonna start the charge of these battery packs. And the ultimate thing that we're trying to do here is measure the internal resistance of these packs. So we do so by setting Setting our charge rate at 1.5 times the capacity. Since we're dealing with a 5300 milliamp hour battery pack, we're using an eight amp charge here as our rate. I'm gonna quickly skip over the time that it takes us to get to the end result here. After about a minute, this is our results that we get for our very first battery pack. Now these internal resistances do seem a little bit high. However, let's compare the second battery because what we do is we ultimately average out the results. So again, I'm gonna skip over all of this and we jump to the results here of the second battery. And this shows to be a bit lower in terms of our internal resistance. Now what we can do is take these internal resistances, we can take that over to our calc sheet in order to determine the actual C rating and compare that against the Eternity Rapid battery pack there that we've tested a while ago. Here we're taking a look at the RC Explained Patreon calc sheet. Any member of the RC Explained Patreon community can download and access this specific sheet. You can save a copy for yourself so you can perform all the calculations, not only just the one that we're doing here in this video. As you can see on the bottom of the sheet, there's a lot of different tabs of calculators that you have access to. We're gonna jump over to the LiPo calc sheet and this is the one that we're gonna be using here in order to determine the actual C rating based off of internal resistance. I can assure you that this C rating is a lot more accurate compared with the C rating that is on the labels of all lithium polymer battery packs. So let's take a look at this. Our battery capacity that we're gonna enter in here is 5300, so we're gonna place 5300 in there. We have an internal resistance of 5.93, so let's place the 5.93 in here as well. Now this determines that the battery pack's calculated real C rating is about 14 C. In comparison, our maximum continuous current is gonna be about 75 amps for this specific battery pack. Now let's put the parameters of that Turnigy battery pack to see how that compares against this one. So when we're doing this, we're gonna go and put the battery capacity of the Turnigy, since it was a 5,000 milliamp hour pack, we know that that's what we place in there. And I'm looking at the data that we captured on that battery pack, we got 6.58 for the average milliamp hour internal resistance. We plug that in and it drops our actual C rating based off of internal resistance, calculated from internal resistance to 13.8 C. And the maximum continuous current that you should expect approximately would be about 60 amps for that particular battery. Here we prove through the internal resistance of the battery pack that the 
Firework battery does have an edge over the Turnigy Rapid battery pack. Well, there you go, guys. The results are in. Now we're going to be doing our test where we look at the actual performance of the battery when we load it at a nominal 105 amps. So let's go ahead and take a look at the results that we now have achieved. Here's the data that we've collected from our 105 amp load test. Here we have both batteries being compared. We got the Turnigy Rapid on the top and we got the firework that we're actually testing here in this particular video on the bottom. So keep that in mind as we're going through this data. So the 5300 firework battery pack, the actual C ratings between these as they're rated are very similar. 100 C being the rapid line there and the firework at 120 C. Now when you look at the total milliamp hour that we were able to get out of this battery pack we got about 600 milliamp hour more under load from the firework than we did from the rapid line from Turnigy. When you look at the milliamp hour to 3.50 volts under this significant load we have a significant difference here where we're going to get 362 out of the firework versus 66 out of the rapid. The time there to get to that mark is 13 versus 2 and then we look at similar results here for the milliamp hour and the time to 3.6. When we look at the voltage that we're measuring at 10 seconds, this tells a really good story because we do see that the firework here is at 3.54 volts in comparison to the turns you wrap it at 3.39. So very different there in terms of the voltage that we're actually seeing under load only at the 10 second mark. So obviously at the 20 second mark or 30 second mark, these values are gonna be even lower. The energy that was being able to be dissipated here for each one of the cells, we got 443 watt minutes for the turns you wrap it battery versus 563 for the firework. And then we look at the average cell wattage. Now now this is showing you how much power we're getting per cell. These are four cells. So if you actually multiply this value by four, you get the average wattage that we're putting out under this specific load. We get 315 out of the rapid and we get about almost that 330 there out of the firework battery pack. So you're, you're definitely seeing that you get 15 watts more per cell out of the firework than the rapid battery pack. This data set essentially says that the firework battery pack is better than the Turnigy rapid series series there, 100C versus 120C when you compare these two batteries. You can see from our discharge curve we got in blue is the voltage and orange is the current that we're seeing. We can see a nice steady decline which is very common and typical for a lithium polymer battery pack and then right at the very end of the test when we hit that low voltage cutoff you can see that the voltage rises right back up there. And on the spreadsheet that I have for the Patreon guys I do show what the resting voltage is and we have a bunch more data that is included in that data set than I'm able to show here. So if you want to see that, check out the RC Explained community, become a member of that tier two membership, and you'll be able to see and download a copy for yourself of all the batteries that we've tested thus far. This is going to be in there for the release that we do in October. And then in October, we're going to cover another battery pack that will be released in the November version and so on. Well, there you go, guys. You have the results. Now, one thing I do want to mention here, and I'm starting to find this better and better the more battery packs I have and use that have it. This battery here contains one of those plastic cases that pop over top of your balance lead. And I really do appreciate this feature, this small component that gets added to this. It just makes it a lot easier to plug in your balance lead, to be able to grip the balance lead. And I'm glad that the Firework battery pack does, in fact, include that. That is definitely something that I really appreciate using in order to make it easier for me to plug that into the balance board. Well guys, I hope you enjoy seeing the performance that we get out of these lithium polymer battery packs. Make sure you hit that like button so we can see more of these videos. Hit that subscribe button so you won't miss them and I'll see you in the next one. Thanks a lot guys for watching. See you in that next one.